Good evening and welcome. I, I think I heard the distant chimes of our clock. Um, uh, we're doing half past six, so welcome to our service of choral evensong. Uh, this is the second time we've been able to do this recently, so we are a bit further forward. And um, we've got Andrew um, on the organ here. I'm just going to come across and uh, picks up the microphone. And Martin's here. We've got our Helpers across here, so we've uh, got Paul and Peter sorting out those at home uh, joining us on Zoom and YouTube. Um, most, most of you will be familiar with our service of uh, BCP Evensong. Um, you'll have a prayer book for the, the words. You'll also have a hymn uh, for the, the words of the first hymn. Sadly, uh, the rules as they are at the moment, uh, we, we can sing. Uh, we ask that uh, you don't and follow the words. Uh, the final hymn the choir will sing is, is not in the hymn book, it's just that first one. Uh, there's no offertory at the moment, and we ask at the end if you could leave your hymn books where they are uh, when you leave. And hopefully everything else flows nice and smoothly. So we uh, begin our worship with our first hymn, which is Immortal Invisible. In the hymn books, it's hymn 474, Immortal Invisible. Thank you. sits and as we pray. To the Lord, our God, belong mercies and forgivenesses, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, 
which he sets before us. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us, but thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises, declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that these things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
sit for the psalm, which is Psalm 60. The first lesson is taken from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3. My child, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and abundant welfare they will give you. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them round your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favour and good repute in the sight of God and of people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, and turn away from evil. It will be a healing for your flesh, and a refreshment for your body. 
Honour the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. My child, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves the one he loves, as a father, the son, in whom he delights. Happy are those who find wisdom, and those who get understanding. For her income is better than silver, and her revenue better than gold. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, in her left hand, are riches and honour. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is the tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold her fast are called happy. Here ends the first lesson.
The second lesson is taken from the first letter of John, chapter 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Everyone who commits sin is a child of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The Son of God was revealed for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born of God do not sin, because God's seed abides in them. They cannot sin, because they have been born of God. The children of God and the children of the devil are revealed in this way. All who do, who do not do what is right are not from God, nor are those who do not love their brothers or sisters. For this is the message you've heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We must not be like Cain, who was from the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? because his own deeds were evil and his brothers righteous. Do not be astonished, brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love one another. Whoever does not love abides in death. All who hate a brother or sister are murderers, and you know that murderers do not have eternal life abiding in them. Here ends the second lesson.
as they standing to affirm our faith in the words of the creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. time, O oh Lord, because there is no other that fights it for us, but only our God. O oh God, make clean our hearts within us. and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that, forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both 
our heart may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. He remains sitting as the choir sings an anthem by John Rutter, Look at the World.
So we now have a time of prayer. We give thanks to our God for his goodness to us. See what love the Lord has shown to us that we should be called the children of God. We pray in the words of the anthem, give us, Lord, thankful hearts that we may see all the gifts we share and every blessing, all things, come of thee. We give thanks for the gift of this day, the gift of life, for the gift of life, of breath, as we woke this morning, for the people we have met, spoken to, listened to, thought about, the news that we have received, good news, but also the challenges of things that have troubled us. As we draw to the close of this day, we pray that we are not wise in our own sight, but we know and share the wisdom of God. We pray that we trust in the Lord in all our ways, not limiting our God into something small, something part-time, something under our control, but a God who we catch glimpses of in our lives, a God who knows us fully. We pray that our God keeps us safe throughout this night and we wake afresh for the gift of a new day tomorrow, for the gift of a new week. We pray for the many challenges in our lives. We pray for an anxious world. We pray for our Queen, her government, her parliament, for leaders throughout our nation, for leaders throughout our world as they make such difficult decisions. Balance, balance, balancing health and the economy. We pray that all leaders may know your wisdom and seek the common good. We give thanks that over many years and centuries, cures have been found for many illnesses. Treatments have been found that make our lives better. We pray for those seeking new cures and new treatments, praying especially for our anxious world as it continues to struggle and face, struggle with and face the coronavirus. We pray for all those who we know who are ill in body, mind or spirit at this time. We pray for our doctors, our surgeries, our hospitals and care homes as we pray that you strengthen the weak. We give thanks for your great promises made in love to us. Not just the gift of life, but the promise of a God who never leaves our side. Whether we are asleep or awake, whether we are forgetful of our God, our God does not leave us. 
We give thanks for the promise of life. Life in its fullness. Life into eternity. We give thanks for the lives of those who have gone before us. As we pray for those who grieve at this time. In our prayers, especially this week, we pray for those who pray, who grieve for Ryan Haynes. We give thanks that we can bring our grief before our God. We bring before our God the memory of those who loved us, those who we loved, those who we love, and those whose presence we miss. As we seek to follow the ways of our God in our lives, may we seek wisdom. May we be kind and patient. May we be willing to show love to all and to receive love. May in our lives, our daily lives, may we be able and willing to see what love the Lord has shown to us, that we should be called the children of God. These and all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, we offer through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So the choir now sings our second and final hymn, Come Labor On.
Under God's gracious mercy and protection, we commit you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and always. Amen.